Dead. So we're here today, we're going to be actually demonstrating uh, Vic20 doing its first historic tweet uh, onto Twitter. And uh, this is Richard Beals from The Expositor. And uh, we're also here with Matt Ruiz from uh, FM92 and CKPC Radio here in Brantford. And uh, what we're doing here is the Commodore Vic20, the computer, uh, almost 30 years old. It's going to be celebrating its official 30th uh, birthday next year. Um, the program that we're going to be running today is called TweetVer. And uh, TweetVer is more than just a single program for the VIC-20. It's actually a platform that, uh, that we've developed here at the Personal Computer Museum to let all kinds of vintage computers actually go onto Twitter. Although we've only developed the VIC-20 version, we hope that other people will actually take this software and the source code, which we're going to release next week, take it and make clients for things like the Atari 400, the Atari 800, the Apple II, the Timex Sinclair, whatever platform, almost every old platform is going to be able to uh, use this technology in order to uh, create tweets. Um, I decided to save the program onto a cassette because a lot of people don't realize that uh, cassette was actually the, the main way of saving programs uh, in the 70s and into the early 80s, was eventually of course replaced with uh, the floppy disk, which eventually of course is just replaced with downloading. We don't even really have to store programs, although obviously we can still use memory keys, but uh, CD-ROMs and DVDs are, are still out there, but even those are going uh, the way of the dodo bird, as a lot of things here in the museum have. Um, so the uh, VIC-20 has a lot of technical limitations. Uh, this is an unexpanded VIC-20 uh, that only has 5K of RAM, and to give you some concept of that, that's only really, you know, not even a, ch a chapter in a book. Like, that's not a lot of uh, space to actually be able to do this in. In fact, the VIC-20 only has a usable amount of memory of 3,583 bytes. Um, and after this software is loaded, the VIC-20 has about 600 bytes free. So I don't have a whole lot of space, but there is a little bit in here. The other challenge with doing this, and something that uh, I have seen, because this isn't the first vintage computer to go on Twitter. Uh, for example, there is a Commodore 64, which is the bigger brother to the VIC-20. There's a version of that that works. The problem with that is that things like something simple, like when it asks for your password, it shows it in plain text and uh, on the screen. So anybody that happens to be walking by can see your password. The goal today is after um, you see the demonstration by our two representatives that are here for us, you can actually log into your Twitter account and post something from the VIC-20 if you like as well, and you can do it in such a way that no one else is going to see your password. So I actually had to write a custom routine to do that. Not a huge deal, but it's one of those things when you start developing the software and start to use it, and you think, hey, wait a minute, um, you know, everyone's going to see my password. That's not good. So that's one of the things that we had to do. So. Without any further ado, Richard, uh, take it away. Um, you're going to put in the username of the uh, account, which is Vintage PC. And uh, we couldn't get PC Museum, so we had to go with Vintage PC. And uh, yeah, that's correct. And just hit return. And now it's going to ask him for the password, um, which I will be changing after this event is over if anyone has seen the, uh, the listings. And uh, when he presses return there, it's going to give him two choices. Unlike the regular web client where you can see everything on the screen. You can decide whether you want to see other people's status updates or you want to tweet out. He's going to hit F1, which is going to show a tweet out, and it's going to ask him, what are you doing? Which is, I know not the new way Twitter is saying, but he's going to, that's the old way. So we're kind of old here, so we're going to go with the old way. Um, you'll notice that as he types, the number of characters available uh, do show in the bottom corner. And this is actually the same way that the website does it. And of course, when it gets down to less than 20 characters, it'll actually change color just like it does on the web. So some of the features that regular Twitter has available to it are available on the VIC version. Um, as you can see, it's actually taking up most of the screen. There isn't any word wrap or anything fancy like that. Those are all things that maybe someone else can consider as an enhancement. Uh, but just because of the limited screen real estate, we're, uh, we're doing this as uh, best we can here on the screen. It's very strange to see web addresses on a VIC-20. It's just not something you'd normally see. And as he went below the 20 characters, the, uh, it turned red, even though it's more of an orangey, orangey kind of red. And uh, he's done, and he's going to... Uh, let me just uh, get the uh, iPhone going here so I can actually see what's going on. If someone wants to bring up the museum account on that uh, iMac over there as well, that wouldn't maybe be a bad idea. Just give me the word, boss. You go for it. Now sending it off. 
<laughs> Give it a second, it's slow. <laughs> and it should be there on the net. And uh, go verify that. Yep. It's there. We're getting tweets. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Thank you, Richard. You've Thank done you it. My moment in history. You have done it. And by the way, this was Richard's first tweet ever. So uh, I guess the, the good news for him is he can only go up from here. Hopefully, I'll be in the 21st century sometime next week. <laughs> All right, and then we get Matt in here. We'll switch spots. Now, what Matt's going to do is Matt's going to be the first to pull down the update since we've done the tweet. And I've told people to go out and send messages on there. And we'll see two different tweets. You go ahead and put the username in. Um, we're going to see the latest two tweets. Now, there is one downside to this, this program, and that is, of course, there's no Unicode support, which what that basically means is that uh, if people are posting things in different languages, um, it's not going to show up perfectly well. But if it was posted in English, it should look okay. And uh, so we'll find out in a minute if that does work. And uh, what you're going to do is, yeah, just press the F7 key and uh, give it a wait there. We'll see what comes up. And uh, first two people, that's not English, but that's okay. And uh, those are the first two tweets from users uh, Gene or TizX and uh, Rizgi89. So those are the first two tweets that have come up. Now you might think to yourself, there is more room on the screen here to put more tweets. Uh, the problem is these are very short tweets, so we're only going to see two. If you want to go ahead and press F7 yes, again, yep, it'll go and retrieve the next two tweets as well. And um, so we'll pull down those and we'll see what those say. Hopefully there's uh, nothing bad going out there, bad <laughs> messages on the screen. So, And there you go. Actually, that's pretty cool. The, the Here's proof that it worked. We just got a retweet, an RT for those that are Twitter fans. We just got a retweet from somebody saying that the VIC-20 did indeed tweet and uh, that it's come back onto our screen. So that's pretty cool and absolute proof that this has worked and it has been done with the VIC-20. If you just want to press the back arrow key there to go back to the main screen, I want you to put the username and password in again and then go ahead and do your own tweet. Return. And this time you'll press F1. Top one. And then, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> Tweeting with the VIC-20. How's the keyboard feel, Matt? A little, uh, a little different than the ones at work, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, this is uh, probably something from around the year that I was born. <laughs> well, there you go. So it's got even a special meaning for you as well. Um, the other nice thing about this VIC-20 is it's uh, absolutely in mid shape. It's one of the, the nicest specimens that we have here. Actually, I think the best looking VIC-20 that we have. Even though it's almost 30 years old, it doesn't show any of the typical signs of uh, plastic fading or anything like that that we often see. And what Matt is doing is Matt is directing people to tweetver.com, which is uh, the website for the software that this runs on. So um, sometime next week I'll be posting the source code there so you can download it and uh, if you have a vintage computer you can play with it as well. <laughs> a little too quickly. For yeah, that's here. okay. It has a keyboard buffer. Okay, <laughs> any VIC-20 fans here that know? How, what's the size of the keyboard buffer of the VIC-20? You, you don't count. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, Leaf, what is it? Ten bytes. Yay! It's ten bytes. <laughs> okay, and here it goes. You literally ran out of space. You're, you're at zero, zero okay. bytes left because you spelled favorite the Canadian way, but that's okay. okay. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I left you that extra space. So, All right. Thank you, Matt. Perfect. Thank you. Good job. And uh, so it's uh, now open if anyone else wants to come in here and uh, check it out and put their username and password and then uh, go check your account and see if it worked.